Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at voltage commutated chopper. So let's get started. So this is the circuit diagram of a voltage commutated chopper. So at the first place, we need to understand what is this circuit and why is it required. So if you carefully observe, whenever we are using the resistors in DC-DC converters or chopper circuits, we need to have an external mechanism to turn this circuit off, isn't it? So basically, if you have to turn off T1, you need an external source or an external way in which you can turn this off in this particular circuit. The reason is because in case of thyristor being used in AC circuits, the supply voltage for AC goes negative and due to natural commutation, T1 was turning off that we have seen in rectifiers, isn't it? But since here it's a constant DC power supply, we need to have an external method in which T1 can be turned off. So that is why this circuit is particularly used. Why is it called as voltage commutator chopper then? We are going to turn off T1 by building up a voltage across the capacitor C so that T1 is turned off. That's why it's called as voltage commutator chopper. TA is an auxiliary thyristor. D is a diode and L is connected in this particular way. So the reason of having these components as we proceed you will understand but it's actually aiding the need for turning off the thyristor T1. We have a switch connected in series and also a resistor RC generally considered in design. So how do we analyze this circuit? So initially we will be closing the switch yes which was open over here we will be closing it so that the capacitor starts charging and reaches its voltage across the capacitor reaches the supply voltage Vs and the current will be flowing only through this path and T1, TA all of them are open circuited and we are not going to trigger them initially. So this is the first step that we have to do or the first assumption is we are going to consider the capacitor to be fully charged to the supply voltage Vs. So Vc is equal to Vs in this case and that we are going to achieve either through a power semiconductor switch here, you can use a BJT or you can use a MOSFET or you can also use any mechanical switches or electromechanical switches like relay based on our requirement. I hope the first thing is clear over here that we are going to charge the capacitor to voltage say equal to Vs. Now let's continue our analysis. We are going to divide this into various time ranges as what happens at duration 0 to T1. So we are going to parallelly consider the waveforms and during this time period what happens is what we are going to see in detail. So with respect to waveforms, IG1 is the gate that is given to thyristor T1, IGA is the gate that is provided to thyristor TA, IOUT is the output current, IC is the current across the capacitor or the current flowing through the capacitor, VC is the voltage across the capacitor and Vout is the output voltage. So these are the most important ones. Several textbooks has a lot of waveforms but on a general note if you consider these waveforms you are good enough. So we're going to consider different time periods that is T1, T2, T3, T. T is the total time period but it is distributed and divided as several small pieces for us to understand it in a much simpler way. So 0 to T1, so what we are going to do, first we are going to consider the gate pulses for IG1, IGA, these are the instants at which we are going to trigger them. So what will happen to the overall circuit and the waveform is that we are going to consider a constant load current that is flowing into the circuit, I out. So this is an assumption that is being done because our focus here is to turn off the thyristor T1 and not focus more towards the load current that is flowing into the circuit. So we're going to assume a constant continuous load current that is flowing into the circuit in this particular fashion. So now what happens to the circuit is that at zero what we are doing we are giving a gate pulse to thyristor T1 as a result it is acting as a short circuit over here. So the voltage across the capacitor initially was plus and minus isn't it. So the current will be flowing through two paths over here that is nothing but one is through the source through this direction through this direction and it will flow through the load in this direction and it turns back to the source in this direction. So this is one path for the current to flow and there is also an additional path 
where the current will be flowing through this path. So the energy that is available in the capacitor will be flowing through this path and the inductor is charged charging with a polarity plus and minus. Consequently, current will be flowing through this path and the diode will be forward biased. So if you carefully observe, the diode was connected in this fashion, isn't it? So the cathode is connected to negative of the capacitor. As a result, it is forward biasing the diode D and it is acting as short circuit over here and the current will be flowing through this path. Isn't it? So what is the nature of the capacitor current? So if you carefully observe over here, TA is open circuited. So the capacitor and inductor is connected in series, isn't it? So when they're connected in series, the energy that is available in the capacitor is being discharged to the load as well as the inductor over here. So the inductor current and the capacitor current is same, isn't it? So the inductor is slowly starting to charge, meaning to say that the current is increasing. So we will be having an increasing pattern of current from this point to this point till it reaches a maximum point where the inductor is completely charged. And once the inductor is completely charged, what will happen? The inductor does not allow sudden change in current. It will reverse its polarity as plus and minus and consequently it will charge the capacitor in the opposite polarity that is plus and minus in this particular direction. So as a result, the current through the inductor is being discharged and the capacitor is slowly charging and consequently the current is indicated in a decreasing fashion till this point. I hope this point is clear till this point. Now what happens to the voltage across the capacitor? So initially the capacitor was fully charged to a voltage say equal to Vs and the capacitor started to discharge isn't it? Some amount of voltage will be going to the load and some amount will be coming to the inductor. As a result it was at Vs at this point, it was at Vs at this point, but it slowly starts decreasing and goes to minus Vs, isn't it? Because it has reversed its polarity because of the energy that is available at the inductor, it has reversed its polarity and the inductor has started to charge the capacitor. As a result, it is minus and plus now, if you see the polarity. So it will be reaching a point called as minus Vs over here. So this is the decreasing nature of the capacitor voltage waveform till T1. Now what is the nature of the output voltage? So output voltage is pretty simple. Whenever you are connecting the source to the load through thyristor T1, whatever is supplied is appearing across the load, isn't it? If you carefully observe this point, whatever is supplied from the source is connected to the load, meaning to say that V out will be equal to Vs. So that's why you're getting a waveform something like this. So I hope 0 to T1 is pretty clear. We'll be continuing on our analysis. Again, what happens when T1 to T2 interval? So again, we'll be considering the waveforms. We'll be continuing from the waveforms that we had done previously. So from T1 to T2, right? So since the capacitor is reversed, charged with a reverse polarity minus and plus, plus is connected to cathode. As a result, diode is reverse biased and acts as open circuit. So this is the major difference from the previous circuit because the capacitor is reverse biasing this particular diode. Now what is happening to this particular circuit is that previously there were two paths, but now we are opening one particular path over here. So the direction of flow of current will only be from the source load in this direction and then it returns back. So meaning to say that the capacitor over here does not have a discharge path through this. So it has only one direction of flow of current through this path. This is basically open circuit, isn't it? So there is no connection over here. This is also open circuited. So there will be no flow of current through the capacitor. So what happens here from T1 to T2, the capacitor current is zero because this is open circuit. So there is no flow of current through these points. As a result, it is zero over here. But what happens to the capacitor voltage? The capacitor voltage is held firmly constant at that point because it reached minus Vs in the previous cycle. It will remain the same as a constant value because it is not discharging its energy anywhere. It does not have a path for it to discharge the energy. So the energy through the capacitor will be discharged from positive 
through this direction, isn't it? You don't have path in both the directions. As a result, the capacitor is not having any path for the capacitor to discharge its energy. As a result, it is held as constant over here. Now what happens to the output voltage? Output voltage will remain constant at Vs because the supply is still connected to the load. It's basically a short circuit. Whatever is available at the source side is connected to the load side. Isn't it? So that's why you're getting a constant voltage Vs over here. So I hope you have understood what happens from T1 to T2. Now let's continue our analysis. What happens from T2 to T3? Again, let's consider the waveforms. So we had previously seen that minus and plus was the capacitor voltage, isn't it? So at this instant, we are basically at T2, if you carefully observe, we are actually giving a gate pulse to thyristor Ta, meaning to say that we are actually short circuiting it. Basically, it's going into conduction mode. As a result, it is acting as a short circuit over here. And what happens immediately is that you are providing a negative voltage to thyristor T1. Basically, this is a short circuit. So the capacitor is directly connected in parallel across T1. If you carefully observe, it's directly connected in parallel, isn't it? So you're providing negative and positive voltage. You're basically reverse biasing thyristor T1 through the capacitor over here. So consequently, the switch T1, which was acting as short circuit, has become open circuit now. That is because of the reverse bias of the capacitor that is causing the thyristor to go from forward conduction mode to reverse blocking mode where it is acting as open circuit at this point. So when we are providing a reverse bias to the thyristor, fundamental concept anode current through the thyristor will decay to zero. As a result, it's becoming moving, it's moving its state from forward conduction state to reverse blocking mode. So now we are able to achieve turn off of thyristor T1, isn't it? That's our objective and we are able to do that. So what is the waveforms with respect to the capacitor current, the capacitor voltage and V out? So at T2, what is happening to the capacitor current? The capacitor current will become equal to I out. The reason is because there is a path for the current to flow through this path, isn't it? The current will be flowing through this path. That is nothing but all of them are connected in series. So I out will be equal to IC, isn't it? But in this case, it is minus IC. That reason is because the capacitor is reverse, reversely charged with a polarity minus and plus. As a result, the capacitor current will go to minus I out in this particular direction. I hope this point is clear. Now what happens to the voltage across the capacitor? So the voltage across the capacitor over here will again start to increase in this particular fashion. The reason is because it will start discharging through the load and consequently in the next cycle, once the energy is completely discharged up to this point and becomes equal to zero, what will happen? The capacitor will start charging with a polarity plus and minus through the source again. So this cycle is what is giving a shape where it will first discharge and become equal to zero and then charge again and reach a voltage equal to plus Vs over here. Now what happens to the output voltage over here? The output voltage will basically double. The reason is because you have minus Vs over here. Capacitor has some voltage. You have source voltage. Both of them are connected together in series to the load. So both of them will get added up as a cumulative factor and you'll be getting twice the voltage at the load. So you'll be having two times Vs at this particular point from T2 to T3. And then the output voltage will slowly decay to zero at T3 that we will be looking at in the next slide. I hope this point from T2 to T3 is pretty clear. Let's continue our analysis. Let's move to what happens during T3 to T. Again, let's consider the waveforms. So in this particular case, what is happening from T3 to T is that since the capacitor in the previous cycle got charged with a polarity plus and minus, and it is equal to Vs, what it is doing, it is acting as a reverse bias to thyristor Ta, isn't it? So it's actually turning off thyristor Ta. As a result, it is opening 
it's acting as an open circuit over here previously it was conducting but since it has discharged its energy in the previous cycle and consequently reversed its polarity and charge it to a polarity equal to plus vs whatever is available from the source now minus is appearing across the anode of ta as a result it is reverse biasing ta and acting as open circuit over here i hope this point is clear so now what is happening to the capacitor current the capacitor current is zero because there is no path for the current to flow through in this direction because it's acting as open circuit and t1 is also open circuited over here as a result there is no flow of current through the capacitor and it is equal to zero but one important observation here is that the energy that was previously stored at the load say if you have an inductive load it will reverse its polarity say it was charged plus and minus in the previous cycle it will reverse its polarity and ensure that the current still flows in the same direction as it was flowing previously as a result it will forward by a freewheeling diode and the current will simply be freewheeling across the load over here so the capacitor current is zero over here and consequently in the next cycle again it repeats once we give a pulse to gate that is for thyristor t1 now what happens to the capacitor voltage it had reached vs it remains at vs till this point the reason is because it's not discharging its energy anywhere and in the next cycle again the cycle repeats as we have seen in the previous case as we are triggering the resistor that is t1 what happens to the output voltage the output voltage from t3 to t will be equal to zero because this is a simple short circuit isn't it if you take a voltmeter and connect at these two points this is a short circuit according to the concept of redundancy the current flows to the least resistance path so most of the current will be flowing through the short circuit as a result the output voltage across it it will be equal to zero and again in the next cycle the waveform pattern repeats as we have seen previously so this is what happens from t3 to t and again in the next cycle as you subsequently turn on thyristor t1 the pattern repeats so our agenda of turning off thyristor t1 through the capacitor is achieved and that is the reason why these circuits are actually required although this analysis looks pretty complicated but if you break these circuits in small pieces it will be very easy for you to correlate and understand how this complete operation works i hope this video gave you a clear understanding of voltage commutated chopper in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it give your valuable feedback in the comment section below thanks for watching stay tuned thank you